on this episode of Bondi Vet. That lump is huge. Audrey has her hands full with a booty makeover. That butt weighs like three kilos. <laughs> That's a very rare thing to see. Chris battles to save a newborn kitten with a rare birth defect. This is truly a race against time. He's surprisingly friendly for a wild bird, but you're acting weird. And can Scott find the cause of this wild parakeet's strange behaviour? That might be a problem. You make my world a better place. <laughs> Come on, there's your girl. Good girl. Hey, let's go see Auntie Audrey. In Sydney, Nurse Brianna is arriving with Audrey's next patient, 12-year-old Rotty Coco. <gasps> Hi, Coco. How was she for pickup? Oh, she was an angel. She's so good. The big, friendly girl has a big problem that needs urgent attention. So we're in today to remove mm. that massive lump. Yes. Now, I've been seeing Coco because there's been this lump on the back of her thigh or more near the base of her tail and it's growing it's growing really quickly and it's now starting to press on all the areas that is causing pain when she's walking or getting up so you can see it's coming it's almost lobulated so it's got a big one here that's pushing her tail back I know and then it's actually extending all the way here so if i grab it we're looking at a lump the size of half mm. your head i'm concerned because it's so big but also it seems to have almost two lobules to it. One going over the thigh and the other one going towards the bottom. So Brianna comes up with a cute little phrase, we call it the double bubble butt. Um, so Coco now has a double bubble butt. And just the position of it, it's kind of in an odd place where it's pressing on her hip, it's pressing on her bottom there, so that might start to affect the way she yeah, can go to the toilet. That's what mum was saying this morning. She was saying that they're, they're noticing that it's getting a little bit hard for her to toilet. The toilet. Oh, so yes. they're really quite worried about it. Anxiously waiting at home is Coco's worried mum, Duo Lee. We've had Coco for 12 years. We've had her since she was eight weeks old. And um, she's a big part of our family and we really hope we can remove this lump and she gets back to her old self. You can see how big it is because her actual tail... Is it has, bending? Like yeah, curvy? has bent to one side. Yeah. So, just there. so you can oh. see her tail's just bent to one side so it's asymmetrical now and then... Oh. That lump is huge. I know, I know. It's huge, baby. Come on. Come on, beautiful. Let's get that double butt off. Getting sleepy. So we give Coco the general anaesthetic through her vein. It was so good. She goes to sleep. And then we have to lift her onto the table to connect her to the anaesthetic gas. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> yes. That butt. It weighs like three kilos. <laughs> Both me and Bree found our muscle power and we managed to get it on the table, but it was a tough job. So we've got Coco under general anaesthetic, so she's on the oxygen and the gas. Why are you breath holding? <sighs> but she stopped breathing. So some of them, when you go on the anaesthetic, will hold the breath because they don't like the, ta the, the taste of this. <sighs> Her heart's coming up a little bit now. That's her. It's every 20 seconds. Okay, good. With Coco's breathing now stable, the booty makeover can begin. Look at that. But it's not an easy task. So the tricky points with this kind of surgery is you don't want to remove too much muscle around her bottom because that's responsible for contracting when she's going to the toilet. We're always worried that it could be something nasty. Um, so more than just the lipoma, it could be a nasty type of tumour that could potentially spread. So getting it off and finding out exactly what it is is very important. Four. So there's one over the hip and then it kind of gets narrower and then there's this huge one more towards the bottom and the base of the tail. So I'll start with this smaller one and see how we go. So I make my first incision and I start undermining the skin away, just trying to get to the edges of this lump. More blood. One second. So I have to gently lean in and I'm just helping it with some little bleeders there. 
It's now been 30 minutes since surgery began and Audrey's still battling what's turning out to be the largest lump she's ever removed. So I'm finding that this fatty lump, it's actually quite deep. It's actually going all the way down to the muscle there. So I'm just trying to slowly peel it off. My God, it literally just keeps mm -hmm. on going. This thing is huge. It's probably double the size of what I thought it was. I always think we're like getting closer to the end, but nope, there's more. Yeah, it is huge. It, it is, is ginormous. It is the mother of all lumps. It looks like a brain. It, it does. I can't see anything nasty. I see things that make me nervous. So right now I'm just peeling it off a vessel here. So that makes me a bit nervous. Um, but it does at this point just look like all fat, which is great. There was a moment there. I was feeling like this was never ending. So it's been a pretty big day and quite an intense surgery. We do do lump removals quite a lot, but this is no ordinary lump removal just because of its size. I think it weighed in at 650 grams. Um, so that surgery was a bit of a workout and I'm just relieved we got it all out and that she's gonna be feeling a lot better after this. Now the drapes are off, you can actually see she looks like she's got a normal bottom. And I think that she'll be quite pleased that that's out and she's got her normal movement back again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, baby girl. Uh, yeah. You're oh, nasty. Oh, what was that? Right, let's get you down before you get too <laughs> Are you snoring? <laughs> we can tell mommy the good news. You call mom. This is the best part. The recovery snuggles. I love them. Yes. Makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> How are you? How's Coco going? She's great. You gonna come over here? One month later, and Coco has fully recovered from her marathon surgery, and Audrey's dropping by to deliver the biopsy results. So all her hair started to grow back, which is great, and I can see that that excess skin, because obviously it was all stretched from the size of that lump, that's all contracted in, uh, and that's made the healing look a lot better. And even her muscle starting to grow back on this side because all that muscle was pushed aside from that, that huge mass. So I'm very happy. And she's obviously going to the toilet a lot better now? Yep. Great. So every time we remove a lump, especially a fast growing lump, we're always worried that it's nasty, whether it's spread internally and it's gonna affect her quality of life. But it's a good day today. I get to deliver good news. So that lump we sent off to the lab and the results came back okay. and good news, it's a benign tumour, so it's oh. a lipoma, which is basically a massive capsulated fat um, and it just gets bigger and bigger and of course the problem with that is it starts to press on things and become uncomfortable and in Coco's case obviously going to the toilet was difficult. So it's a good idea that we removed it but also really good news that it's not something nasty that will spread yes. internally. Oh that's great. Yeah, Good, good news, news to you Coco. Yay. So I'm really happy with the physical exam, I'm really happy with the surgical site, it's healed well, but I want to see her going out, running around, and see how she's moving. Come here, Coco. Whee! Good girl, walking very well. Audrey's just told me everything's fine, she's doing good. Um, Coco's moving, running, so yeah, so hopefully we'll have Coco for another 10 years. So very, very happy with her recovery and progress. So keep me posted, we'll keep checking in on her and I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch. All right, All right. good fun? news today, buddy, hey? Good job. All right. All right, thank you. See you, Coco, see you, Dior. Right, bye. Bye. Bye, Audrey. Doing? Okay, um, what we've got here? Um, I've got Scarlett back with her little kitten. At the Bondi Clinic, Scarlett is fiercely guarding her three day old kittens. Hey, sweetie. So tiny. It's a little leg, okay? Yeah. Owner Wendy and her family have grave concerns about one of the little girl kittens, Amari. Normally in a vet clinic, the earliest you ever see a cat is at around six or maybe even eight weeks of age. To see these little kittens so young, it's very much out of the ordinary. 
So, what's happened? Because these guys are, have only just been born. Right? Yes, they have. Um, one was the last one that came out. Um, she's come out with a twisted leg, which I'm really concerned about. When you, Wendy first brings this kitten out, I look at its legs and straight away know whatever it has, it's serious. That's a very rare thing to see in a kitten, just to have that leg twisted and, and hanging like that. Essentially, if you look at this leg here, at the base, it, it bends up, which is kind of like her ankle joints. Yeah. And here, it goes the opposite way. Yeah. The clearest way of putting it is that if Amari was a person, she'd be able to bend her foot right around and actually scratch the back of her calf muscle with her toes. That's pretty scary. But she was born this way, wasn't she? Yes, that's right. Yeah. I had tears streaming down my eyes looking at her. People have told you that she should be put down. Quite a few vets around my area said they should, you should be euthanized her straight away. I refuse to be because I love, love the cats. Um, no, I'll do no matter what to save her. I'll do what I can. Mm. I mean, it's obviously a pretty dramatic yeah. issue that she has. Yeah. Is this okay by you, Mum? <laughs> you can take it back, are you? No? It's all right. Good okay, girl, good. My big concern at the moment is looking at that leg. Maybe it's just the tip of the iceberg. What I want to do is have a look over her right now and just check there are no other little problems because quite often if you have a deformity, you can have other issues there as well. We'll just have a look on the roof of her mouth just to check there are no holes there. A classic location for a genetic abnormality is a cleft palate. So it's important to look inside the mouth. It's actually pretty smooth in there. Let me just have a little listen to her chest. Thankfully though, listening to Amari's heart, the beats sound clear and crisp. There's one thing we don't need to check, and that's her little voice box. <laughs> that is fine. Yes, that's good. It's working perfectly, isn't it? After doing a full physical examination on Amari, I'm more confident that what we're looking at isn't a genetic abnormality, but I can't be sure. The only way to be sure is with an X-ray. We'll be back and then, um, I can work out a plan. Yep, excellent. That's of course her fingers, eh? She's gonna keep on crawling away. Okay, so this doesn't look great, but it's often the best way to keep a kitten that's moving from giving us a blurry image on an x-ray. I'm sorry, Murray. This is not what you want, but yes. I've taped you down now. My real hope is that Amari's problem is purely as a result of her being in the womb and being compressed up one end and never having a chance to really stretch that leg out. X-ray. The X-ray will tell me though if this problem is actually the cause of a serious bone deformity. If that's the case, this issue will not be easy to fix. So you can see this is the normal leg here and that's the femur coming down to the tibia and fibula. But when we go to the problem leg, we go femur, tibia, fibula, but then it takes this massive deviation out to the side. We've got tendons, we've got ligaments, we've got muscles that have tightened up and twisted and, and essentially locked that leg into the wrong position. Good girl. Good Owner Wendy is anxiously waiting to hear what Chris has discovered. It'll be heartbreaking to see a bad outcome. I'm really hoping for a good outcome. So, I've had a good look at the x-rays. Mm -hmm. So what we're dealing with is a purely soft tissue problem. So, <laughs> it is something that's just in the tendons, mm -hmm. in the ligaments, in the muscles. Yeah. What we're looking at is something that has probably occurred during her pregnancy. Yeah, so she's been squished up yeah. or so forth, but then yeah. hers not be able to stretch out. Yeah, so she's got essentially what we call twisted leg syndrome. Yep. It's very rare. It occurs in very few kittens, but when it does happen, thankfully, there is something you can do about it. From what I can tell in the x-rays, she's got all the parts of her leg she needs to be normal. You've made my day already. <laughs> <laughs> when this kitten was born just a few days ago, Everyone said, put it down. There's no reason for it to live. Yet she looked at them and said, no, I'm gonna make sure this kitten gets a chance. No, you may have saved her life. She clearly sees something in this kitten and sees some sort of hope. My job now is to try to turn that hope into a reality. Good girl. 
So she may only be three days old, but what mm -hmm. she's going to get is a pretty intense physical workout. Kitten physio may sound a little strange, but it is exactly what Amari needs if she's going to be any chance of correcting the position of this leg. If Chris can't straighten the leg, the tiny Tonkinese kitten may never be able to walk properly. So our first goal is to get that leg straight. Mm -hmm. So if we straighten it out Pull there. it out. Yeah. OK, we let it go. At the root of this problem is the fact that the tendons that are actually meant to be loose enough to allow Amari's ankle to function normally, they're simply too tight. They're pulling that foot right back around. So we push to the point of resistance, which is mm -hmm. right there, and we just hold it there for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Devoted owner Wendy will have to continue Amari's rigorous treatment at home. You're going to have to be a bit tough here too because she is going to scream. let out a few little screams. Yeah. Okay. But it's all for the best, darling. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of hard work, um, a lot of long hours, a lot of having to put up with a little poor little thing crying. But um, I know it's all going to be worth it in the end. So we're going to, in between the stretching, mm -hmm. put her into a splint. You may not be surprised to know that we don't make a lot of <laughs> kitten splints. Really? Yeah. <laughs> There's not a huge market for it. No, so it's going to be um, a makeshift type of... homemade. While the idea of the physio is to try to loosen up those muscles and those tendons, the idea of the splints is to really lock it in position and then get the body used to that leg being in exactly that spot. It's OK, She gets around. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tricky for her, but the hope is that she'll she'll actually have to move this leg through now. Yeah. And that'll build up her leg strength. Yeah, okay, but that's that's a really nice start for her now. From being told 24 hours ago that this kitten shouldn't be kept alive to now, within the last 20 minutes, actually seeing real progress, it's quite a transformation. Wendy's really been rewarded for her faith in this little girl. All right. Okay. Big question is going to be whether Mum approves. Yeah, she's fine with it. Yeah. Couldn't okay. have thought of a better outcome, hey? She's got a really good chance. Yeah. You know, as a vet, sometimes you do wonder whether once they leave the clinic and go home, whether that work will actually be truly done. But with Wendy, knowing her connection to Amari, you know it's going to happen. And she is going to have to work hard if she is going to get the results she deserves with Amari. Been wondering how you've been going. Good. Come on through. Let's go. Come on, Isaac. It's been a couple of days since I've seen Amari, so I'm very keen to see just how she's coped with that splint. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. The unknown for me as I'm taking this splint off is how have her muscles and her tendons reacted to being put in what for them is an unnatural position. Yeah, look, the good news is that we're now more comfortable in that straight position. We've managed to correct that twist. Why don't we see if she can actually move around all by herself? Yeah. She's moving a lot better though. She is, yeah. See, the, the will is really there. This, this foot wants to come through. The final challenge for Amari's leg is to get into that right angle position with her feet upwards. That way her toes can actually grab the ground as she moves that leg forward and she might just walk like a normal cat. So. Just like we did a few days ago, we're going to start with just a little bit of physio, just to get it comfortable. We've made really good progress in just a couple of days, but in many respects, we've had to. This is truly a race against time. We have to get her body used to this new leg position before she gets bigger, and her weight means more force is going through these legs. This time, we need something with a right angle. Okay. So. We're going to use a specimen container. You're going to get more creative for me. Yep. The next stage in Amari's treatment is a second splint. Just, you'll see in a minute, mate. This time to get her paw in the correct position. Oh, 
Oh, I understand it now. Yeah, you're getting it? Getting it. She's got a bit of a way to go yet. Mm -hmm. She just has to get used to that leg position yeah. and get the strength from that. But she's already lifting it up and she's already keen to move it through. And yeah. for her now, walking should actually become easier yeah. if she can handle this new position. Yeah. She's a fighter, a big time fighter, and she will continue to fight. I suppose she's back into a nice little warm, warm bed, hey? You go and you go there. Hey, Amari. Well, Chris won't be long. Are you going to have a look at those legs? Hey, okay, we'll see how they're going. Wendy and her children, Isaac and Imogen, have brought in Amari and a couple of her siblings. Oh, what a little splint you've had on. I hope it works, eh? Hey? Little Amari is now six weeks old, and it's time to see if there's any improvement in her badly twisted leg. Lots of physio, probably 20 times a day we've been doing stretches and um, with the splints and lots of screaming by her, but um, hopefully it's been all worth it. Now let's put them down, okay, we brought a few others. As Wendy and the kids are walking in with the kittens, I'm thinking, Amari is just one kitten, why are there three? I guess it's a really good thing that I can't actually pick which is which. <laughs> My challenge for Chris, well, I brought three kittens in today. They're all exactly the same colour, about the same size, and I want Chris to pick which one is a Murray. So they are pretty cold there. So if you look at that, he's actually a little boy. <laughs> You're getting a little bit warmer. That's not her? That's not her. Hey? It's you. Is it you, a Murray? You go. Really? You really. But look on those back legs. She's on my sword. Look at that walking. My mind keeps on going back to that moment just a few weeks ago where I was confronted with a kitten with a badly twisted leg and not much hope of survival. Wow, Let's and she's almost says. able to bend it right up yeah. by itself there. That's what he said, isn't it, without crying too. She's a little powerhouse though. That, that's a, I'm actually pushing reasonably hard there. I knew from the moment I gave Wendy those instructions about what she had to do with Amari's leg that she'd find it hard and she'd find it confronting because she had to push past Amari's pain threshold. But looking at what she's done, I'm in awe. She's done a remarkable job. I think you've been through enough hurdles for a lifetime in the one. So you can just enjoy the rest of your life like you're enjoying this chin scratch. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I would have been able to do this without your help. It's been absolutely tremendous and I can't thank you enough. No worries at all. Yeah. I did my bit, but you're the one that, that you know, stared down those people that said she should be put down and said, no, I'm going to give her a chance. So. Well, that's it. I'm a determined one. She was so, so cute. Like, there's no way I could do that to a cat. Yeah. Amari has really occupied a really special place in Wendy's heart. She's been so determined, so dogged, and has made sure that Amari has overcome massive obstacles to be here today. And now she's got a life with Amari to look forward to. Right, try it again. Nice. Oh, nicely done. Yeah, she's got it, she's got it. Nearby in Twickenham, a young family has taken in a very sick parakeet. Oh, she's dropped it again. Dawn is one of Scott's four sisters-in-law, and her children, Henry and Olive, are animal crazy. You remember what she was like yesterday? <gasps> she was in a bad way. We were in the park with the kids, and one of Scott's neighbours comes over to us and says, oh, you're Scott's sister-in-law. You know, do you know anything about birds? Can you come over and help? And I thought, yeah, my sister married a vet. Of course I can help you with a bird. <laughs> anyway, he went over to have a look, and, um, and yeah, sure enough, this bird was in a pretty bad way. Around her eye, mm -hmm. I can kind of see a very, very thin circle of blue, like her eyes. Oh, wow. Me, do you think maybe she's just made it that colour because she wants to be in our family or something? <laughs> I think the kids are probably pretty keen to keep the bird. That's why my house is full of animals, because they keep rescuing stuff. My nickname for my house is now The Ark. Um, they don't come in two by two, they sometimes come in threes or fours as well. You think he's going to be okay? I don't know, mate. Scotty's on his way. 
Very much looking forward to Scotty coming over today to just explain a bit about what might have happened to the bird, what we can expect from the future, and what the best thing to do is. You know, it's a wild animal we've found. What are we supposed to do next, really? Come, Come on, Daddy. Hang in there. Henry, what have you guys got in there for me? A bird! No way, let's have a look. Bonnie, how are you? Good to see you, mate. You're all right. Good to see you. And you. There's an animal in my house. <laughs> yes, and it's not looking particularly well. Can we take this off and have yeah, a look? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should we do that? Wow. I have to oh. say, she's 100% better than she was yesterday. Really not looking very good yesterday at all. Yeah. She and was basically staying still a lot yesterday, but today she's sort of a bit frantic and nervous. OK. Tell me how you found the bird yesterday. She was on the ground, right at the tree, just staring at it. I just primed the kids with the fact that she was probably not going to pull round, but mm. this is amazing. She isn't drinking, she isn't eating. She's basically just refusing to do anything. Looking at the bird for the first time, it's definitely sustained a shock. It looks like it's some kind of head trauma as a result of flying into a tree. It's definitely a little brighter than it was yesterday, according to Dawny, but this is not a well bird. Apart from trying to assess the parakeet, Scott's also grappling with another complication. It's a controversial issue what to do with the Indian ringneck parakeet because it has been around for a number of years, but it definitely isn't native. It's thought that maybe it was just a few birds that were released by accident and there's now thousands in the skies. It's a little bit of a worry though because they're quite a bully of a bird and they're actually pushing a lot of native species out of their nesting sites. So morally, should I even be allowed to release it? And that, I don't know. This bird clearly has been through shock, and shock is actually exceptionally dangerous in birds. And even up to 24 hours after a serious injury, they can literally just drop dead. I've actually even had a budgie that I was clipping nails die in my hand. Right. They're that responsive to shock. So wow. it's great that it's lasted this long, and 24 hours later it's moving around a little bit more, which is all positive. But, you know, kids, I, I can't promise what's going to happen here. So I think what I'm gonna do, if it's okay with you, is I'm gonna yeah. take the little birdie to the clinic. Okay. And I'm gonna have a little look and just see what's going on and see how much damage has been done. Okay. And if this birdie can go back to the wild. Whenever you are looking after kids, you know that they are going to bond with animals very quickly. And of course, Olive and Henry, straight away, they find the bird, they love the bird. So I'm gonna do my damnedest to make sure that this bird pulls through. Guys, we just have to remember, Scotty knows best okay with this, so whatever he says we need to do, that's what needs to happen, okay? Okay. All right then, see you later, kids. See you, Donnie. Yeah, take, take it care. easy, thanks, Scott. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, honey, see take ya. care. See you later. See you later, mate. It will be quite hard on the kids if uh, if the parrot doesn't come back. But at the same time, you know, I think they, they knew they were doing the right thing. They just wanted to bring it back from the brink. Off to the vet practice. Hey, Nath. Hey, where you got that? Oh, I've been picking up birds again. <laughs> this time, my sister-in-law, Dawny, has found a rather unwell ring-necked parakeet. Today is all about uh, having a look and seeing what's wrong with it. So let's bring you through the consult room and have a little look, shall we? So this bird has sustained some kind of trauma, some kind of injury. I don't know what it is yet, so I do need to do a full, thorough clinical exam. Let's have a look at you, shall we? Hey. Right, start with the head, have a little look around there, have a look at the eyes, have a look at the beak, is there any discharge? Then I go and have a look at the wings and see are they healthy? And also to see if the bird has any condition, I press on its breast muscles, which would suggest the bird's been eating recently. And then finally go down to the back end and just see is there any diarrhea? Is the bird at all unwell? You look like a pretty healthy little bird, really, don't you? You're really surprisingly friendly for a wild bird. Yes, you are. You're acting weird, aren't you? Hey? This bird is showing some really weird behaviours. The fact that she's not particularly frightened of me, nor is she trying to fly away, that is strange for a wild bird. So I do need to do a further few checks just to find out exactly what's going on. Okay. 
That might be a problem. Hmm. You can't see, can you? Hmm? Let's just try something here, shall we? So little birdie, what I should be seeing is your pupils constricting or getting smaller, but it's pretty obvious that you can't see that light at all. You really can't see anything. You're not responding to me doing this and you're not responding to light. This is a healthy bird that has all of a sudden lost her vision. And I would suggest that's because she's simply flown into a tree, hit her head in the place that controls vision. And sadly now she's blind and I don't know when her blindness will resolve, if ever. And because you're a non-native invasive species, I can't let you go anyway. But now being blind, I've got no choice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip your wings so you don't injure yourself. You don't need any more visits to the vet, do you? And then we need to try and encourage you to eat. Nath, can I get you, give us a hand with the bird please mate? This little bird's blind and as a result, if she can fly, she can injure herself. And so if I clip her wings, she won't be able to get the lift that she needs to fly and would be much more safe. There's no nerves going down the feathers. So it's a bit like cutting hair. As long as it's done carefully, it's very safe and non-painful. The parakeet will now need to stay in the clinic for observation for at least another 24 hours. So now that you clipped her wings, what are you gonna do with her now? We need to find you a home, don't we? Hmm? Hmm. I know a couple of kids that I might be able to twist their arm and see if they'll take on a new birdie. Hey, mummy might not be so pleased, but hey, it's all right. Hey, another angry sister-in-law. Yeah, I've got so many as it is. Ooh, you're liking that, aren't you? Here we go. <laughs>Right, you, on best behaviour, I still need to find a home for a blind parrot. And I certainly know the first place that I'm gonna try. Here we go. Hi, guys. Hey. Look who hey. I've got. Hey. You've got the pretty. Hello, darling. Ah. Yeah. Girl. Now remember she's a bit wild, so that's why she's having a bit of a nibble of Scotty's fingers. <laughs> so the interesting thing, guys, is that your bird's actually blind. So, so she, she can't can, see. She can't see, I'm afraid, no. Um, she can definitely hear me, you watch. <laughs> she's like, wow. is she like, how? Dare you I say know. that? <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe I was being a bit cheeky in bird, was I? <laughs> but you can see that she can hear me, which is great. So she hasn't lost all of her senses, but she can't see. I think it was quite sobering for the family to hear that the bird is blind. But it's amazing the amount of pets that we treat that are blind and their families deal with them very well. It's about making sure that their environment doesn't change very much and just understanding the sensibilities of a bird that can't see. Unfortunately, because she's blind, she can't go back to the wild. And also, because she really shouldn't be flying around with all of our very important British species, mm -hmm. she also can't go back to the wild. So, mm -hmm. um, so kids, um, would you like a bird? Yeah. Yeah, I we think so. What a great people. idea. Let's keep a bird. Look how excited Mummy is about it. So, I'm ah, so excited. We already yeah, have three birds. That's brilliant. Can we have a chat? <laughs> Hanging out with Dawny and the kids has really put a ray of sunshine into a fairly dark day. What do you think? <laughs> and even though I've totally railroaded my sister-in-law, Dawny, into taking the parrot, I know that this is the right home for this gorgeous little bird with very special needs. So what kind of name do you think we could come up with this little girl? Kia. Kia, yeah. Kia. Where did you get that name from? Um, it's a cartoon called Just In Time. Okay. A cute little name, and I always think if you name a pet, you've got to keep it. So it looks like their family's increased by one feathered friend. Hey, Scotty, I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, how, how long is Kia going to live? Uh, well, um, 30 years or so. <laughs> oh, cool. Yes. Thanks, Scott. Well, uh, I mean that. Thanks. You I, know. I could really, I like, can tell. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. So where is she going to live? That's a really good question. Probably the same question I had to ask myself with the, the battery hens. The dog, 
the two cats and any other of the crazy animals that come passing by my house that have needed somewhere to live. Uh, I suspect here, that's where she's gonna live. And I've got another animal in my house. And I shall just rename my house the Ark, yes. She's a happy, healthy girl. <laughs> she just yeah. can't see. She can't see how utterly <laughs> happy you are. <laughs> She's made a few marks on your fingers from her claws. We really, really love her. No, we really, 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 really love her. <laughs> Actually, no, we really, 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 really love her. Let's see, look she's listening to you. Kia is a very lucky bird. The kids are in love with her and yes, she's a blind bird, but I think given the right care, she's going to be a very happy bird and seemingly also a happy family. Come on, trouble. Way, there we go.